Now we will talk about a model of electric current. Uh, let's say that we have this electrical conductor that is connected to positive potential on the left side and negative potential on the right side. And therefore, we see that electrons will flow towards the uh, left side and positive charges will seem to flow to the right side, even though they actually don't move. Remember that it's the mobile electrons, not the uh, ions. The ions are fixed in place inside the crystal. Now, uh, effectively, they are moving to the right with a drift velocity Vd, but it's the electrons moving with velocity Vd to the left. And there's a perpendicular area A. The distance traveled inside the conductor is delta x. The volume of the segment of this conductor in which we have this charge flow is basically the area the top surface area of the cylindrical conductor multiplied by its height so it's going to be equal to delta x multiplied with the area a now <clears throat> if the charge carrier density is n what what does that mean the number of charges per volume is n it's the charge density then there are how many carriers in this segment? Uh, so the charge density is N, number of charges per volume. The volume of the segment is A, area A, multiplied with delta X, the height of the cylinder. Then there will be N A delta X carriers in this segments, in this cylindrical conductor. Then what is the net charge that is flowing through this uh, segment of the conductor? It's the number of carriers multiplied by the charge of each carrier. Let's say that each charge carrier carries a charge Q and the number of charges is N A multiplied with delta X. And the distance traveled by these charges delta X inside this segment is the drift velocity vd multiplied by the time it takes delta t so this is basically assuming that each charge carrier moves with a drift velocity vd that is parallel to the axis the flow axis uh, and the average current that flows through this uh, electrical conductor is the charge that flows through it per unit time. The charge that flows is delta Q per unit time delta T. So what is the charge that flows through this conductor? We have found that it's the charge of each carrier Q multiplied with the total number of charges, which is charge density N multiplied with the volume area delta x divided by delta t now if all of the charges are moving with an average velocity vd vd is delta x divided by delta t so for delta t i can write delta x divided by the drift velocity vd so you can see here delta x divided by delta t is v drift and delta T is delta X divided by V drift. So that's what I substitute here. And you can see that the delta X's will cancel. And I will be left with the average current Q, the charge of each carrier, charge carrier density N, drift velocity VD multiplied with the cross-sectional area A. So the average current that flows through this conductor is Q, charge of each charge carrier, N, the charge density, number of charges per volume, V drift, the uh, average velocity of these charge carriers, I'm assuming they all have the same velocity, multiplied with area A. Now, during the flow of these electrons to the left, it will be hindered by collisions with atoms, which increases the atomic vibrational energy, leading to an increase in temperature. So, uh, 
when the electrons that move to the left side uh, basically collide with these immobile positive charges they will cause vibrations of these charges uh, basically about their equilibrium positions these vibrations will lead to an increase in temperature so atomic vibrational energy is basically going to lead to an increase in temperature so we can uh, see this uh, in a cartoon here if an electron comes and hits this positive uh, immobile ion uh, it will reflect from it it will hit another positive uh, ion it may reflect from it uh, here and it will hit another positive ion it may reflect here so we have random collisions all of these electrons will have random collisions and at zero field zero electric field we will see that there will be no net flow of electrical charge so uh, it's going to be just random collisions with no current so that means the current i will be equal to zero now if we have a potential difference this side is at a negative potential this side is, a po is at a positive potential we expect that there will be a net flow of electrons from the left side to the right side so during this flow electrons will hit these ions as well and they will reflect but there will be a net motion to the right and it's the average velocity vd that's called the drift velocity so this is when we have an electric field that is non-zero so if this is at a positive potential this is at a negative potential what is the direction of the electric field here the electric field will point from the positive side to the negative side so this will be the electric field the the force the electrons feel is basically to the right it is minus q times e because the electrons have negative charge so electrons will feel a net force towards the right side and they will be uh, uh, normally accelerating to the right side in between collisions but because they have these collisions they will have an average speed uh, so uh, the flow is hindered by collisions with the uh, immobile ions and we will have a net flow uh, with an average velocity vd to the right okay so we talked about the model of electric current when we consider the se segment of a conductor which has volume delta x times area a if the charge carrier density is n the number of carriers in this segment is n times volume n a delta x the net charge that flows through it is the charge of each carrier multiplied by the number of charges n a delta x the distance traveled is the average uh, velocity v drift multiplied by delta t uh, and the average current that flows through it is delta q over delta t which is q and v d a so it's the charge per carrier charge density drift velocity times the area a but in fact this electron flow is hindered by collisions with atoms uh, which increases the atomic vibrational energy so what happens is that uh, these guys will uh, start having uh, vibrations uh, in these directions atomic vibrational energy will increase and this will lead to a temperature increase so heating of the conductor and there, uh, in normally when we have zero electric fields the char the current is zero because we have random collisions of the electrons but when we do have a net electric field to the left so that the left side is at negative potential right side is at positive potential there will be net flow of electrons because they feel minus electron charge minus q times e electron charge is negative so it is uh, the force is to the right to the positive potential but we have these collisions uh, on the uh, on the path so that will basically cause an average drift velocity vd in between collisions it will be accelerated due to the presence of this electric field so in this case we have a net current flow uh, the electrons will uh, move from the negative potential to the positive potential which way will be will the current uh, flow will occur you know that current always flows in the direction of positive charges so positive charges flow to the left negative charges uh, flow to the right so the current basically flows from positive potential to 
negative potential as we have seen here uh, it always flows from positive potential to negative potential